Hello, Dave Soriano, chemistry professor with the University of Pittsburgh, Bradford, in Bradford, Pennsylvania, northwestern Pennsylvania. Here is a YouTube uh, lecture, one I use in one of my courses, Introduction to uh, Biomass Fuels. This lecture will uh, be devoted to the uh, survey of methanol formation and uses. Methanol formation. This is part one of three parts. Now, methanol formation through the methyl formate ester has been known as recently as 1919. Christensen reported the uh, following process. One mole of wood grain alcohol, methyl alcohol, methanol, and one mole of carbon monoxide was found to yield an equivalent of methyl formate ester. That methyl formate ester in a separate reaction can be hydrogenated with two moles of hydrogen to yield two moles of methanol, therefore a net gain of one mole of methanol. The net equation here is uh, carbon monoxide and two moles of hydrogen converted into one mole of methanol. Now this two-step synthesis consists of methanol carbonylation in subsequent reduction of the methyl formate ester to two moles of methanol. The reaction can be a one-pot process or two steps in gaseous state or liquid phase, either one. Carbonylation can use potassium methoxide catalyst, homogeneous, or with amberlite resin, which is heterogeneous. Ester hydrogenation can be conducted with copper chromite or copper on silica support. Overall, methanol production is via syngas, but at lower temperature pressure versus conventional methanol manufacture. 80 to 120 degrees Celsius, 1 to 50 atmospheres of pressure. I refer you to catalysis today, volume 93 to 95, 2004, pages 113 to 119, and this reports atmospheric pressure conditions. The carbon dioxide hydrogen, uh, excuse me, water must be removed from the syngas feed since they react with the catalyst. Now, much current R&D is going on. I refer you to the patent literature, which you can access with Google, U.S. Patent uh, Database. A lot of R&D is going on since this approach lowers the syngas current methanol manufacture from a temperature range of 2 to 300 Celsius and pressures of 50 to 100 atmospheres. Can we consider methanol from methane without syngas? As long as natural gas is available, and there's plenty of it in the United States, which for the first time in decades, we're actually exporting fossil fuels. We have the Marcellus play and other plays throughout the United States, Marcellus Shell, plenty of natural gas right now. It will be used to manufacture methanol, and through it later, synthetic hydrocarbons and their products are derived from the methanol. Methanol, incident, uh, therefore, as you know, is an extremely important chemical feedstock or platform chemical. Now, methane hydrates will soon be used, and new ways to convert methane to methanol will also be needed. None of this addresses uh, the generation of carbon dioxide release into the air, of course. Um, with any fossil fuel, you're always going to have the carbon dioxide uh, sequestering problem. How about selective oxidation of methane to methanol? The steam reforming step of the syngas process is highly endothermic and also converts methane first to carbon monoxide, which must then be reduced to methanol. Direct selective oxidation of methane to methanol is highly desirable, but not yet practical in terms of yield or selectivity. Now, with selective oxidation, you can. The advantage is that you can avoid the syngas process, which uh, is um, not a clean process, nor is it uh, energetically as efficient as you would like. The amount of methanol produced is increased by selective oxidation, and capital costs in production are decreased. The main target is selective oxidation yielding methanol, but not formaldehyde, formic acid, and carbon dioxide. They have, of course, less fuel content, energy content per mole, or in the case of carbon dioxide, virtually nothing of value whatsoever. Now, the following slide has thermodynamic values. 
Methane to methanol on paper from left to right has an enthalpy standard conditions of negative 30.4 kilocal per mole. It's exothermic. And uh, methane to formaldehyde is even more exothermic, negative 66. When you consider methane going to carbon monoxide, partial uh, combustion, and two moles of water, the enthalpy there is a negative 124. And finally, standard oxidation combustion of methane to carbon dioxide, water, and energy. Well, that enthalpy, there should be a negative sign here, negative 191.9 kilocal per mole. We're dealing with very uh, varying amounts of uh, exotherms with the four processes. Now, a number of ways exist for methane oxidation. We can consider homogeneous gas phase oxidation. We can consider heterogeneous catalytic oxidation, photochemical oxidation, or classic electrophilic oxidation. We will outline each. Now, catalytic gas phase oxidation, we would consider methane and oxygen at pressures of 30 to 200 atmospheres and temperatures in the range of 2 to 500 degrees Celsius. The best yields with decreasing diatomic oxygen concentration are, are found. 8 to 10 percent conversion with 75 to 80 percent selectivity is best. And we find that 450 degrees Celsius, 65 atmospheres, with less than 5 percent uh, mole percent uh, diatomic oxygen in a glass line reactor, which the latter incidentally minimizes secondary reactions. Overall, this is uh, the best process known so far, conditions known. At high pressure, gas phase radical reactions predominate, limiting expected favorable effects of catalyst. Radical pathway cannot be well controlled either in terms of selectivity. It has been learned that at pressure one atmosphere, the catalyst can play a crucial role in partial oxidation of methane with oxygen. It turns out that metal oxide catalysts seem to work best, while metals tend to favor complete oxidation. At temperatures of 6 to 800 degrees Celsius, formaldehyde was predominant and sometimes the only product found. Silica has unique activity in forming formaldehyde. With molybdenum 6 oxide or vanadium pentoxide, you get higher yields, but formaldehyde remains at the 1 to 5 percent level. If you try using the molybdenum oxide on silica with steam at methane conversion 2 to 25 percent, there you can get 90% methanol formaldehyde mixture, mostly methanol. As methanol, formaldehyde, and formic acid jointly form, Ola and co-worker Prakash found an approach where a second treatment step can be used. The carbon dioxide must be kept to a minimum with 20 to 30% of methanol, formaldehyde, formic acid formed, and excess methane recycled. The formaldehyde can be dimerized over titanium oxide or zirconium oxide to give methylformate. Methane oxidation. Let's look at two moles of formaldehyde and a catalyst yielding methylformate ester. Let us consider two, two moles of formaldehyde and water disproporting. This is a catazero type reaction to yield methanol and formic acid, equal molar amounts. Methanol and formic acid to yield methylformate. And methyl formate uh, can form two moles of methanol via hydrogenation or electrochemical reduction, as mentioned earlier. Now, here's a newer method of methane oxidation, where it's been reported that oxygen and hydrogen and methane, in the presence of iron 3 phosphate catalyst, can yield methanol as the main product at a temperature less than 400 degrees Celsius. Liquid phase oxidation of methane continued. In order to minimize side products and increase methanol selective formation, the use of temperature 250 degrees Celsius is preferable. Current catalysts used for methane oxidation are not active at these lower temperatures. As early as the 1970s, George Ola and co-workers were investigating superacids in the presence of hydrogen peroxide, and they found that the uh, process would attack methane in electrophilic fashion via the carbon H methane bond which is really amazing. The product is protonated methanol, which is not subject to additional oxidation because it's in conjugate acid form. 
The use of hydrogen peroxide superacid, incidentally the superacid is known to be a million times stronger than sulfuric, to produce methanol cannot be done economically. So research continues on cheaper peroxides and superacid catalysts. It is surprising that this carbon-hydrogen bond can be activated with certain catalysts at relatively low temperatures. This is a classic carbon-hydrogen sigma bond, which uh, is not as reactive. Any organic chemistry student can tell you that. We would not expect a carbon-hydrogen sigma bond uh, to be as reactive as we're seeing here. Now, here's an example reported by Periana. He was using metals and metal complex catalysts at temperatures as low as 200 degrees Celsius, concentrated sulfuric acid with mercury to sulfate. And he found that methane forms methanol via the methyl hydrogen sulfate, which is subsequently hydrolyzed. At conversions of 50%, 85% selectivity to methyl hydrogen sulfate was achieved, and the mercury 1 is reoxidized to mercury 2 by sulfuric acid. Now, one mole of sulfuric yields one mole of methanol, and the sulfur dioxide generated can be oxidized to sulfur trioxide, which in turn with water can yield sulfuric acid and thus recycle the acidic reagent. Here are the pertinent reactions. Notice, however, that there is no thermodynamics reported for these reactions. The cleavage of methyl hydrogen sulfate to methanol and separation from sulfuric acid is going to require energy. And keep in mind the mercury catalyst is also poisonous. Now platinum, rhodium, iridium, palladium, ruthenium, etc. have all been tested as catalysts. The platinum complex in sulfuric acid currently is best. With this system, methane was converted to methyl hydrogen sulfate and the yield of methanol was 70% and selectivity to methanol was over 90%. Those are good figures. Here's a conventional uh, platinum catalyst. Nothing. Uh, Nothing really uh, uh, intimidating. This is uh, well known to any organometallic chemist. Now, monohalogenated methanes. The formation of methyl halides catalytically with the hydrolysis to methanol and HX being reoxidized. This is good old fashioned beginning organic chemistry here. Methane and diatomic halogen yielding one mole of HX and uh, one mole of methyl halide, which you can then hydrolyze in a second step to methanol with uh, generation of HX. That HX can be oxidized to diatomic halogen and thus recycle. Halogenation via heat or light. It turns out the methane diatomic halogen ratio of 10 to 1 is used to minimize multiple halogenations. 1970s research revealed that certain supports um, tantalum, um, platinum, alumina, uh, zirconium on alumina catalyst can be used. High yields of methyl halide at temperatures of 180 to 250 degrees Celsius with 10 to 60 percent yield and selectivity for monohalogenation exceeding 90 percent was reported. Conclusion, methanol from available fossil fuels will remain the major source for now. Methods of producing methanol from methane, avoiding syngas path, will be developed and utilized. Methane hydrates will soon be used to produce methanol. Biological production will also be important. And chemical reductive recycling of carbon dioxide will become ultimately the major goal here. Ola estimates catalysts may be available in pr practical catalysts in two to three decades. This is the conclusion of part one. I refer you now to part two.